Greeting citizens. Hey you, hey you beautiful creepy human being you. Welcome to my channel and welcome to today's true crime video. I'm so happy we could meet like this. I'm so happy that somehow in all of this nonsense that we're forced to deal with on the day to day, today you and I were able to find each other on this crazy little planet that we call home. My name is Brittany or Bratterstein, whichever you prefer, and today we're going to be discussing a man named Christian Longo. This is a family annihilator who murdered his wife and his three kids. But before we get started, if you've not yet had the pleasure, please make sure to join the Brat Pack by subscribing and ringing that bell. I put out a new video every single week and I would love to hang out with you. Yes, you specifically you, but I can only do that if you join the Brat Pack and become one of us. All right, now that I'm begging you to join my cult, we can go ahead and get into this video. Now, today's video is one of my condensed crime videos, which is basically my contribution to those who like short form content. This is for people who want to get in, get out and get on their way, or for people who just want to see a little more of me throughout the week. So if that's not your thing and you prefer my deep dives, my long form videos, like hour plus sometimes two parters, check in Monday because that is when I do my long, long, long videos that if you've been here before, you've come to know and love. So today I'm going to tell you the story of Christian Longo, the man who murdered his wife, Mary Jane, and their three children, Zachary, Sadie, and Madison. And after I give you all the details in this case, I want you to answer the question of the day, and that is this. What do you think was the motive for Christian Longo to murder his entire family? At the end of this video, let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. And now with all of that said, come gather around and let me tell you the story of Christian Longo, the family annihilator who murdered his wife and three children. Did you guys know the movie True Stories starring Jonah Hill and James Franco was actually based on a real life murder? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Christian and Mary Jane Longo lived in Oregon with their three children. The two had been together a pretty good amount of time. They met in 1989 when they were both relatively young, 19 and 25, with Mary Jane being the older of the two. They hit it off pretty well. Um, mostly, I wouldn't say mostly, a lot of what bonded them in the beginning was their mutual um, religious interest. They met, I believe, at like a religious function. I don't know much about religion in church. I they were Jehovah Witnesses, though. Jehovah Witness? Jehovah Witnesses. They were of the Jehovah Witness faith. Is that right? Sure. Anyways, the two met. They hit it off. They fell in love. He proposed with a giant ring and the two got married and they seemingly had a good marriage and Christian was said to be a good husband. He was said to be very doting and attentive. He was the type of husband that made all the other husbands not look quite so good, which is saying a lot for a 19 year old because I have met some 19 year old men and they are not, they're not, they're not. He was said to be a good one though. He like ravaged her. He complimented her. He brought her expensive gifts and flowers and took her on trips. They'd often go sailing and they'd play, j play? Yeah jigsaw puzzles. They put together jigsaw puzzles. He'd buy her whatever she wanted and he treated her like a princess. But there's always a little bit of trouble in paradise, right? And things weren't as good as they thought. There was some secrets that Christian was keeping even from his own wife. And that is a big part of, that is a big part. A huge thing that he was keeping was that he was living well above his means. He was spending money that he simply did not have. He was maxing out credit cards like a mother. Mm, you know, and even the engagement ring, that giant rock that he had used to propose to Mary Jane with, that wasn't paid off. So he was on a payment plan to make payments to pay it off as one does when they're doing payment plans. And he didn't have the money to make those payments either. So he's maxing out credit cards. He is drowning in debt. And all the while he's stealing money wherever he can so that he can make payments on um, their rent so they don't lose a place to live. So they still have a roof over their heads. And also so he can make sure to make payments on Mary Jane's ring. So she doesn't know what's going on. So he's doing all this while keeping a straight face, acting like nothing is wrong to everyone around him. That sounds so stressful to me. So life moves on and despite having all of these financial troubles and all of this stress and the fact that he can't even support him and his wife, the couple goes on to have three kids and they have them back to back to back. Three under two. Forget two under two, it's three under two. I don't know if that's really what it was, but it was like one year, the next year, the next year, three kids back to back. And after the first baby was born, Mary Jane decided that she wasn't going to work anymore so she could stay home and take care of the kids. So because of that, now Christian has to work even harder, but I'm sure he made her feel like it was no big deal that she quit working because they were rolling in the Benjamins. But in reality, that's just adding more stress to him. So Christian, who had switched jobs by this point, he started working for a newspaper company, had decided, you know, this has been great. 
but I'm really not making as much money as I'd like to be and I kind of like to be my own boss. So he decided to branch out, quit his job and try starting his own business so he could kind of create his own wealth. He could be the boss. He could be the person taking the biggest piece of the pie. Uh, and he just kind of wanted to just set out on his own and see what he could make of himself. I guess while working there, he had came into contact with several like really successful people and in seeing all they had and the type of lives that they led, having disposable income and being able to be like a traveling journalist because he's working at a newspaper, it just made Christian realize that even though he had done well at this job and even the manager, he was even the manager. He had gotten promoted to being a manager. He was never going to be successful as he wanted or as rich as he wanted working that job. So with that, he decided to quit his job and venture out on his own. And he started a cleaning business and to everyone from the outside, it seemed like it was going really well. Like business was profitable. He was definitely spending money. Like he had it. He was buying new cars, going on vacation. This family was not buying generic brand, anything bagged cereal was not in this family's household. You know what I'm saying? He was even getting investors. His father, his own father invested a bunch of money into this company, a company that was secretly failing. Nothing was going right. He was just being swallowed by more debt because now he's trying to run his own business and a business takes a lot of money. Like you have to spend money to make money and he didn't have any money to spend, but he was in so deep at this point that he couldn't really do anything about it. So he, to make it seem like things weren't bad, he started spending even more money. It was just like a giant mess. So he starts stealing again. And this time he starts stealing money from his own clients. Now, Things do come to a head and his wife, Mary Jane, realizes that something's going on when one day her, her husband, their kids are driving down the road in their brand new van. When they get pulled over by police and Christian gets arrested because turns out the van that he's in, he stole it. <laughs> so it turns out what happened is this family was always getting new cars and they were always getting repossessed. Now, I don't know what he was telling his wife. I don't know if he was saying that he was trading them in for something nicer or what, because she was said to not know what was going on. Well, in one of these occasions, he went in, they didn't have a car. He went in to test drive this van. He brought fake paperwork with like a fake name, went out to test drive it and was just like deuces and did not come back. So he straight up stole this van. So he gets pulled over. He gets arrested for this. He is somehow, I have no idea how he's a smooth talker, a fast talker. Maybe he had that face, you know, that trustworthy face. I don't know what it was, but he was able to convince them to not make him do any jail time. And he just got probation for forgery and stealing a vehicle. Bro, you can't, you can't make this up. You can't make this up. But now his wife knew that something was up. She knew he had been lying to her. She knew that he had been trying to project the perfect life and in doing so had gotten in over his head. And she now knew that he cared more about how things look to the outside than how they actually were in the day to day. So his cover is balloon. So now she knows he's been lying and that has to cause some upset. And he also gets kicked out of the church because of the light being shown on him for essentially being like a, a repeat criminal, right? And the church is very important to them. That's where they met. That's where their love was born. So that was a huge hit to them. And on top of that, now he's on probation and owes even more money because he was given restitution. He has to pay for his crimes. And you know what's sad? This didn't even make him learn, man. Like he shortly after this went right back to his old ways. He opened up another credit card, this one in his father's name, and he ran it up like a hundred thousand dollars in debt. How do you spend a hundred thousand dollars, bro? Like how? I don't understand. Cars. Yeah, that's it. That'll do it right there. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine what this was like for his wife, right? Cause this is all bad. This is like earth shattering bad to learn that every bit of your relationship, everything that you had come to know to be true was a lie. And now something that meant more to you than anything, your religion, because people who are religious tend to be pretty passionate about that. And she was, um, now that was strained because she was standing by her man, a man that she would soon find out wasn't even faithful to her. Are we surprised? We're not surprised. Apparently Mary Jane had been in his emails. Now why? I don't know, but you know what? I would say that snooping in your partner's emails is the lesser evil between that and him being unfaithful and then um, later killing you. So we'll just go with that. But either way, she'd been in his emails and she saw that he had been emailing a woman and it would be bad enough if he was, you know, just cheating on her, just being a nasty, dirty birdie and being unfaithful. But it turns out while speaking to this woman, he was also being very disrespectful to his wife. 
he was telling this woman that he didn't love her anymore and that after she had their kids, he wasn't as attracted to her as he had been and that she wasn't giving him enough attention because, uh, she's busy with your three goddamn kids maybe. And maybe she's just super like not that into you at the moment because you got arrested for stealing a car and got kicked out of the church that brought you guys together in the first place. Maybe it's the fact that like your entire relationship was a lie. Maybe that's why she's not that much fun for you anymore. Maybe she doesn't fucking like you, bro. I got heated because it made me mad. <laughs> But this poor woman, man, she confronts him about this. She goes to him and she's like, yo, what the fuck is this? Probably not that aggressively, but she's like, what is this about? And he straight up told her like, I don't love you anymore. And you're not the same as you were before you were became, before you were became, before you became a mom. And Mary Jane did not react the way that I would have reacted in this situation, which would be to tell my husband to get fucked. She, she didn't want to do that. She wanted to keep him and she did stay with him because this is what she felt was right morally to her and also due to her religious beliefs. Mary Jane was just desperate to keep her family together. And I can understand that now. I can understand now that I have a child, why people do stay together for their kids. Thankfully, that's not the situation that I'm in, but I see how it would be so much easier to do so and how you would feel like that's the right thing you're doing for your kid because there's always two parents, right? There's always somebody there to make sure the child's always getting all the love and attention and care that they deserve, or they wouldn't get quite as much if there was just one parent in each household and their attention would have to be divided between running the household and paying attention to the child. Like I can see why that happens even if I don't agree with it. It just makes me sad because this man was clearly just taking advantage of her and she wanted so badly for it to work that she started doting on him. She started doing whatever she could to make him want to be there w and with her and their kids that she started trying to make improvements on his complaints in the relationship, even though they weren't really like issues that she should have been the one fixing, um, just to hope that he would stick around. Meanwhile, he's still got his shit going on. He's still spending money that he doesn't have and making things worse. And he finally decides that, you know what? You know what would be like the best thing, the best option for me and my family right now? We should, we should go and we should go. So he decides he's going to run. He decides he's going to break his probation. He's going to pick up his family and he's going to leave the state and run off to a warehouse in Ohio where they're going to live. Yes. And please qu quickly realize that he's gone, right? They're like, where'd this motherfucker go? They realize he's gone. They put out a warrant for his arrest, but by this time he's like far as shit because like Oregon to Ohio, that is, that is not close. <laughs> right? Right. So this family is living in a warehouse, not a home. They don't have furniture. They don't have a kitchen. They don't, it's just like, it's a, it's a warehouse, right? So he decides he's going to start stealing money and stealing items to fill this place up, make this warehouse a home. So he starts stealing things and furniture and all this shit. And his plan now is to steal a bunch of stuff that he can then sell. So he had enough money to buy a home in Oregon. He's planning to go back to Oregon, but he needs to come here and steal all the shit, sell all the shit so that he can then go there and take this dirty money and buy a home. Now, police are looking for Christian because there's a warrant out for his arrest. And apparently they find out where he is because Mary Jane's family told them. I guess that Mary Jane had told her family like the city in Ohio that they were going to, but not the exact address. So her family who lived in the area, cause she had family in Ohio as well, came over to that city and just drove around and looked for them, which is just wild to me. Like this must've been a small town, just drove around to look for them because they hadn't heard from her in a while and were worried. And they ended up spotting the family dog in the front area of the warehouse. They're like, Oh, there they are. Which is like, what are the odds? This guy is unlucky. Now Christian somehow gets word that police are onto him. How? I have no idea, but he does and he runs again. Him and his family literally like pick up what they can carry. They get in yet another stolen van and they drive from Ohio back to Oregon because that must be the last place that police would suspect them, you know? By the time police arrive at this warehouse, the, the family's long gone. They go in and they can tell that they had recently been there, like all of the goods that Christian had bought in with like money that wasn't his was still there. So it was clear that they had been there, but the family was gone. And this time Mary Jane had not told her family where they were going. And now her phone was turned off. So it was after this that they reported her and the kids missing. Now this missing persons report wasn't taken very seriously by police and it ended up being taken even less seriously when shortly after this, Mary Jane's family did receive a postcard that was said to have been from Mary Jane and it was from South Dakota. And in it, she was kind of like, yo, sorry, I dipped and I didn't say bye. And I haven't been calling. I've just been like super busy. We've been on the move a lot, but her family felt weird about this. So they took this to the police. They showed this to the police and the police were like, ah, well, there you go. Case solved. 
She's not missing. She left on her own. She's having some fun in South Dakota. She's an adult. She's allowed to do that, you know? So they actually closed the missing person's case. They were like, she's not missing. So sucks to suck, but we're done here. That was in November. So now we're going to move on to December. And it was December 19th, 2001, when the body of a young boy was found floating in the Lint Sow River in Oregon. Now, initially the boy was not identified because no missing children that fit that description had been like submitted. Nobody had reported a child missing that fit this description was what I meant to say. Um, so a couple of things started happening at the same time. First, a composite sketch of the boy was put out to the media so that they could bring in any leads. And at the same time, divers were searching this river to see if they could find anything else while searching the river. And both of these things brought in leads to police. Now, one of these things that came in was a woman. This woman worked at Starbucks and she called police and was like, listen, that little boy looks familiar to me. She looks, she looks, he looks like a four-year-old boy named Zachary, who was the son of my coworker, whose name is Christian. And get this, she tells police that Christian had been super weird with her recently, just days, just, just, just shortly before the bodies were found. Okay. She says that Christian had came to her and was kind of like, Hey, listen, if you don't see my wife and kids around, um, in the coming days, months, weeks, years, it's because me and my wife are actually getting a divorce and she's already took the kids and left the state. Next, this was a lead that came from the river itself. While diving and searching this river, they found a second body. This was the body of a little girl who had been weighted down to the bottom of the river because she had a pillowcase with rocks in it tied to her body. This ended up being the body of Zachary's little sister, Sadie. She was only three years old. And it turns out that Zachary had also had a pillowcase with rocks tied to him as well. It was like tied to his ankle, but somehow it had come loose and slipped off. And that's why he had ended up floating to the surface. So if he hadn't, if that hadn't happened, we may never know. I, I think we would still know. I think eventually the, the truth reveals itself. You know what I mean? But in this scenario, that's why he had been found so quickly. So now that these two kids have been identified, police realize that they need to like step it up and find Christian. Cause they realize that he has a wife and another child who is only one years old, by the way, a baby. And they realize that these two people, these two, the wife and the baby are also missing along with Christian. So they start searching. They find out where the family had been living. They go to this apartment building. They're not there, but they do see that this apartment building is pretty close to the water and pretty close to some docks that go into the water. So they go and they start searching in that area. And that is when they discover two suitcases. Inside one of the suitcases, they found the couple's baby daughter, Madison, who was only one years old. She had been stuffed in the suitcase along with other items. And in the second suitcase was Mary Jane. Police do initially entertain the possibility that Christian could be a victim himself, right? So they do continue searching to see if his body could be found. But after extensive searches, he wasn't found. So within a month, he was actually put on the FBI's most wanted list, like the top 10 most wanted people by the FBI. And his photo was distributed everywhere. Police were quickly able to tell that Christian was on the run and that he was headed towards the border of the U S and Mexico because he, this idiot had stolen a credit card and was using this stolen credit card to fund his run from the police. So they were like tracking each of his purchases and they were following him. And the problem was, is they were always one step behind him because he'd make the purchase and he was gone. By the time they got there, he was no longer there. Now police do get a tip when they get a call that someone who was believed to be Christian was in Mexico. And since they had seen that that seemed like where he was headed based on the purchases he had been making, they took this tip to be credible. Well, it turns out this was Christian. Christian was in Mexico and he had taken on the identity of a reporter that he had worked with at that newspaper where he worked at before. You remember that? How he met all those successful people or one of these people was like a traveling reporter. So he was pretending to be this reporter living in Mexico. And now there's a bunch of stuff with that reporter as well, but since this is condensed crime, I'm not going to get into it. But if you want to look into this case more thoroughly, I would suggest doing so because that reporter has a whole lot of shit going on in his life that we could talk about forever, but we're not going to today. So it turns out after the murders, he had used a stolen credit card, went to Mexico. And once there, he was living the dream. It was just like a vacation. He was hanging out on the beach, swimming, drinking, spending someone else's money and hanging out with the ladies. Somehow Christian learns that police are onto him again. How he keeps doing this, I don't know. He must have like a someone watching out for him. He's got a guardian angel, baby. Or, you know, he's just got his finger on the pulse. That's what people say, right? Either way, he learns they're onto him. He runs to another part of Mexico. But by this time, like, he is hella wanted. He's on the FBI's most wanted list, and he's quickly caught 
and sent back to the U.S. to stand trial. Now, Christian did not admit what actually happened to his family. He actually denied doing it for a very long time altogether. So police had to come up with their own theory about what happened. Police believe that Christian killed his family on the same day that he talked to that coworker from Starbucks where he said that his family wasn't going to be around anymore. He thinks that, or he thinks, they think that he and Mary Jane got into some sort of argument, that there was some sort of confrontation. What it could be about, they're not sure, but she sure had a lot to fucking be angry at him for, right? She had a lot of reasons to be mad, is, is what I'm trying to say. So they got into a fight and that he must have hit her over the head with something hard because she did have blunt force trauma and that then he strangled her. Now, why? Like, why did he do this? We don't, we don't know. When it comes to family annihilators, oftentimes it's a lack of money, a lack of control, a lack of fulfillment that makes them do these things. Like we see it so much and it's oftentimes fathers and we don't know exactly why it does happen is the point. Otherwise, maybe we could stop it from happening or see the signs, and, you know, because oftentimes it comes out of nowhere too. That's what's so sad. But anyways, after Mary Jane, they believe that it was the one-year-old baby Madison who was killed next. They think that he strangled her, which is just horrifying to think about because they said that they could see that there were fingerprints left in the baby's neck. It was said that he then put them in the suitcases and then took them and put them in the water before going home and needing to figure out how he's going to take care of his other two babies. It's said that these two were smothered and that he then put them in his car and went to a bridge where he filled pillowcases up with rocks tied them to the children and then threw them over the bridge into the water. Isn't that just so horrible? I can't even imagine that. And apparently he wasn't faced by this because somebody saw him on that bridge that day. Somebody saw him and they reported that he seemed totally normal. Totally normal after throwing your kids, your dead children over a bridge into the water. I don't get it. So uh, he was arrested. I'm not sure if I said that, but he was arrested and get this he pled guilty to two of the murders but not guilty to the other two murders stay with me here <laughs> he does the most cowardly thing one can do and he tells the court that it was his wife it was his wife who caused all of this he says that on december 16th he and his wife got into a heated argument where he finally came clean and told his wife everything everything he had ever done he came completely clean to her and that she went into shock he says the following morning she drove him to work and he seemed fine. She dropped him off. She seemed totally cool. But when she picked him up later from work, she seemed a little bit weird. She said that the two got back to the home and when they got there, he saw his baby, the one-year-old, seemingly dead. And that at that point he freaked out and he asked her like, what's going on? What happened? And this is when she told him that she had killed all the children. She had already killed the other two older children, had driven them, driven them to the bridge and threw them over the bridge. She was the one who did that. So when, upon learning this, he goes into a rage. He beats her, he strangles her, and he kills her. Once she's dead, he realizes the one-year-old is still alive. So what does he do? He finishes her off so she won't suffer. The jury in this case heard that story and they believed him. He was innocent. That's the end of the story. Just kidding. No, they fucking didn't. They were like, that is total bullshit. And after just, it was either just under four hours or just over four hours. At about the four hour mark, that's how long they deliberated. And they came back and found him guilty of all four murders. And he was sentenced to death. Christian Longo has tried to appeal. Of course they always do, but it has been a no-go. They were like, nah dog, you're going to stay in jail. It's going to be a no from me. And as of 2020, he was in the general population in a prison in Oregon. And you remember how I said that for a long time he claimed that he was innocent? Well, turns out that he finally did admit that he killed his entire family. He actually admitted this to the reporter whose identity he had stolen when he was living in Mexico. All right, now that I've given you all this information on that case, I want to revisit the question of the day, and that is this. What do you believe was Christian Longo's motive for murdering his entire family? Please let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. Now with that question, that is it. That is the story of Christian Longo, the family annihilator who murdered his entire family. I wanna thank you for hanging out and remembering the Longo family with me today because it is definitely a case worth remembering. And I hope that you found it interesting and informative because I always wanna make sure that you're finding, taking something away really from the cases I tell you about. Before you leave, please don't forget to leave me a comment down below letting me know what case you'd like to see me cover in the future. As you guys know, or you may not know, I'm sure you know. <laughs> I have a long list of cases and every time you put a case on the list, I uh, put your name next to it. I put it on my list. 
What am I saying? Every time you leave me a suggestion, I put your suggestion on my list with your name next to it in case I cover it so I can give you a shout out. I love looking into the cases you're into because I know you're filled with good ideas and good taste. Otherwise you would not be here. If you haven't already, please don't forget to join the Brad Pack by subscribing and ringing the bell. I put out a new video every single week, sometimes two a week, like this week, and I would love to hang out with you. Yes, you specifically you. And if you want to hang out more consistently, all my social media is listed down below for your convenience, along with a link to my membership. If you want to get early access to non-sponsored videos, live streams, occasionally polls, things like that. And there's also a link to my merch store. This is not my merch store though. This is not my merch though. This is not my merch. So this is Kendall Ray's merch. I'm pretty sure you can still get this at the time that I'm uploading this. Uh, I'll put the link down below. All of the proceeds go to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. And plus it's very cute. So if you want to make a donation that goes to a good cause, that is what I would suggest doing. Now with all of that said, I just want to thank you for being here when you can literally, literally be anywhere else in the world. That is tight. You are tight. Please stay safe and be a better person than you were yesterday. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.